So welcome to the BASC. My name is Diana. I am the program coordinator here. I'm very happy to see everyone today. This is one of my favorite programs because it gives us the opportunity to get to know other people, our staff, our board members, and our friends in the community. This month, we are featuring Richard Martin. Hello, Richard, and thank you so much for saying yes and joining <laughs> in with like us. Like I said earlier, I didn't realize I had an option. <laughs> <laughs> I worked it very well, obviously, so, but thank you so much. Richard, I'm going to just go ahead and get you, get you started off, and you are a board member at the BAT, here at the BAS. I am a board member, have been well, for about three years now, okay. I think. And what, how did you get interested in it? What was the... Well, I... I retired from the Area Agency on Aging up in St. Joe, and they deal with a lot of programs for seniors, and it, this just seemed like a natural fit after I took a couple years off for myself. Then I decided it was time to start, uh, volunteering. start volunteering and getting involved in the community. What kind of things did you do at the Area of Agency? Area Agency on Aging. I was the chief information officer there. We had about 100 computers that we were responsible for, all of the software that ran our programs. Um, that's about it. And you've done some training courses here at the center in the past, haven't you? Yes, here at the center I've taught uh, classes in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and then uh, I, I think I did some PowerPoint a few years back. And then re most recently, though, just before the election last year, I, I did a class on uh, fake news. How to, how to look at what you find on the internet and determine the validity of it, uh, w whether it's something you should believe or not. Yeah. And I believe that program is recorded, and you can find it on the Buchanan Area Senior, Senior Center's Facebook page as well as the YouTube. If you do not have a computer or don't have access to it, please let me know. We can set you off. We have a computer in the library. We also have the big screen. We can also show that. And also, another thing that you're going to be helping out here at the Senior Center with Adam Burke, who is our director, is the grant pad um, orientation and training. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's August 31st at 11 o'clock. And you guys are we, going to be talking about... We have about uh, grant pads, which are little tablets. Um, that come complete with a data package so that you can get on the internet, it doesn't cost you anything. And we're just doing that to try to get people who are not familiar with the internet um, so that they can learn to navigate and uh, decide whether or not the internet is going to be their friend or not. Right, so it gives you an opportunity. So if you have questions, let me know. It's going to be in the August newsletter, who's ever watching this. So let's get back to you. And you said you've been on the board for how long? I think it's about three years. Okay. I ran into Monroe in the grocery store one time and hadn't seen her in a number of years and said, hey, how you doing? And she said, well, how'd you like to be on the board? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never go to that grocery store again. <laughs> you didn't realize you could say no, huh? He's our yes man, I suppose. Pretty much. <laughs> That's wonderful. And what do you like about being on the board? What is... Oh, there's just a lot of nice people up here, all of them trying to do good things for people. And um, as we sit in our meetings and talk about being a warming center in the wintertime, uh, we've been a vaccination clinic numerous times. And it's just seeing a way to help the community through the senior center. Yeah, so you do kind of have an interest with compassion and a little space in your heart for the elderly. Sure. So I what you've been doing. And you have a lot of other stuff that you do as well with volunteering. Um, and in the past you worked with the county parks. Did I remember hearing you correctly one time that you actually out in out west? I, I worked for the United States Forest Service. Okay. I got a degree in forestry back in nineteen seventy eight. Um and I immediately upon graduation, I moved out to Wyoming to a town named Encampment that had 381 people in it. It was named Encampment because there used to be a copper mine there. The 
Rudy Ferris Haggerty and someone else mine, and they had over 5,000 people living in tents in this city that we were then living in. It was even considered to be the capital, or it, it was under consideration to become the capital of the state of Wyoming, but Cheyenne beat it out. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's interesting. And you do a lot of volunteer work. I do. Mm -hmm. And what, would you like to share with us what um, you do? Well, I've helped with the Scarecrow Ladies. Uh, my, my sister Terry Flint got me involved with the Scarecrow Ladies. Um, they make scarecrows, businesses, and people order them. And for a couple of months, they are displayed in the fall downtown. And they make a lot of money selling these. Um, and all of that money is donated to various causes in the city of Buchanan. They've got scholarships. Um, I personally know that they gave $1,000 for tree plantings in Buchanan. Um, they, money for our, our second vehicle. Oh, that's right. They, they gave money for the, the vehicle to, that we use to transport people to medical appointments. Up here at the Basque, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as volunteering goes, um, I also work with the Buchanan Tree Friends, and that, that I probably enjoy more than most things that I do. Um, for many years, uh, American Electric Power and the city of Buchanan were pretty much in the business of tree removal <laughs> in the city of Buchanan. Trees would die and they'd have to come down or... AEP decided that this was in the way of their wires and might cause a problem with an outage. So they would take this tree out and that tree out, but nobody ever planted trees. So four years ago, we, we got involved. Um, there were, I think, seven or eight of us that formed the Buchanan Tree Friends. We didn't have any money to work with in the beginning, so it was mostly setting up our organization, trying to figure out how we are going to get money. But that first year, we planted seven trees. may not seem like a lot, but those seven trees are still growing. Uh, the next year, we planted 20 trees. The following year, and this was during COVID, we actually planted 23 trees. Um, now, this year, uh, in the fall, we are scheduled to plant about 70 trees. 70? Seven. Seven zero. There's, there's an organization that we had a planting down at the Common where we planted 10 trees one time, and it was in the newspaper and on the television. Uh, the Great Lakes, oh golly, <laughs> this, is, this is embarrassing. The Great Lakes Alliance, uh, Great, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Um, tries to prevent runoff. They, they don't want so much soil escaping from the city and going into the river. Um, so we're, they're helping us plant trees. We're going to plant 50 trees in one day. And that's going to be quite an undertaking, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And the city has gotten quite involved. They actually purchased a 36-inch auger just recently to dig all the holes for us. That's super sweet. <laughs> that's big, yeah. <laughs> we planted two trees here. Uh, what it takes is about four hours to dig two holes and plant those it's trees. Really that, bad. That dirt was pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this uh, auger that they're purchasing is going to make it so we have a lot of fun. We're, we're going to be able to go around and plant exciting. a lot of trees. Exciting. We work with um, Fernwood a lot. They allow us to keep trees down there. And then you know, if we're going to plant five trees this weekend, I'll go down, I'll call them and They'll meet me down there and help load the trees up into my truck. And I'll bring them to the site and go back and get a few more and bring them to the site. And, um, that's how we do our plantings. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, it's very exciting here at the center. We had the opportunity. Um, Adam Knight did some volunteering with the Tree Friends last year and helped plant some of the trees at the dog park. And then I went home, and they had <laughs> five hours for the two <laughs> trees that we spent just planting like ten to eight trees. So, but it's a really great project over there that they have, and also here at the center is part of our memorial. If you are here at the center, we do have a big um, tree that has the leaves, so you have a name of somebody that's you know 
you want to put a well to. And um, for additional dollar amount, you can also have a tree planted here on the property and their name. So that you can pick out what kind of tree you would want. And with there's recommendations what trees to use. But so that it is provided be, by the tree. What is that metal structure out here called? The giving tree or something like that? Oh, yeah, the memorial it's tree. The memorial, memorial tree. tree. Okay. It used to be for 30 bucks you could buy a leaf on a memorial tree and that money would go in as a donation to the senior center and then you could have, I donated this in memory of so-and-so. Uh, now with the tribute tree program, we've partnered with the senior center. We actually came here and did a walk around and determined what kind of trees would look best and in what locations. And now we're partnering with the senior center for the low cost of $200 you can get a leaf on the tree up here and have a live tree planted with a plaque on that in memory of someone. Yes, that was really a nice gesture. Mm -hmm. and, yes, okay. Do you do that mostly on public land or can you can individuals get you to come and plant a tree um, in there? Well, we have what is known as a memorial tree program. We, first of all, we, we go out and spend money on the city's behalf and we buy trees and we plant them along the boulevards. Um, but it, we have a tribute tree program, and if somebody wanted to remember a loved one or something like that, um, you can buy a tree through the Buchanan Tree Friends. We've got a list of what we call native trees, um, some that will do well in this area. And we've got smaller flowering trees if you're going to put them under an electrical wire or something that like that along the road. But yes, we can plant them in people's yard, and we have done that. Okay. And we've also planted them in, in parks that people have purchased. Uh, planted trees, not the parks that they purchased. <laughs> <laughs> but the 200 here is for both the leaf and, and the tree. Yes. If you do the tree through you guys, it's a good one. It's 175. Yeah. If they just do it through us, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I do want to know, we talk about your volunteering, that you have recently won the Dow. Dow. Dale, is it F? Flory oh, Dale Flory. The Dale Flory volunteer. So yeah, congratulations. I was, I was pretty surprised by that. Um, I do a lot of volunteer work, but I I don't think I do more than a lot of people. I mean, I think there are a lot of people that do more than me. Um, I just might have been in somebody's vision at that time when they were deciding who to give the award to. But um, Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Time is appreciated. I, I've been on uh, the City Plan Commission for a few years. That's when I had a, a store downtown. I had a computer business for a while. Uh, don't ever go into business. <laughs> 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 um, I have coached Optimus Soccer, mm -hmm. four-year-olds and five-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it started to be a lot of fun near the end of the year when the kids actually under, began to understand a little bit about the concept of soccer and how you're supposed to have teammates and do things with them. <laughs> and I remember my kids doing that. There was like, like, like a swarm of bees. They all went to the ball at the same time. Well, we, we call it amoeba ball. <laughs> they just look like a little amoeba flowing yeah. over yeah. the field. Oh, how fun. Actually, a very large amoeba. Um, but I've done that. I used to coach Little League uh, Baseball when my kids were in, when they were that age. Now they're in their 40s, so um, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, and I just enjoy helping out around Buchanan, that's all. It's where I live. I've been here 40 years. My kids all went through the school system here. Two of my three children moved away. And now they've moved back, so all of my family is in Buchanan. All my kids and grandkids, and I love it. Yay, that's nice. Very nice. So what are some of your passions? No, well, playing music. Um, I play guitar. And I play in a band. As a matter of fact, we're playing tomorrow night down at the Common. Uh, our band is called the Chippewa Project. I live on Chippewa Street. and. We started playing in a garage on the property, and um, more and more people started to come, and all of a sudden we had a band. So we, we call ourselves the Chippewa Project. Now, is that different than the Chippewa 
Chippewa Palooza. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Chippewa Palooza was a two day music festival we used to have in our backyard. Okay. But if you could imagine the combination of 400 people running around your backyard with a bunch of musicians and everybody's got alcohol. Um, Anything can happen. Huh? <laughs> we, we, just, we did this for 13 years, but then we got to consider the liability and decided we were pretty lucky that it worked out the way it did. We weren't going to do it anymore. And so 2018 was the last one of those, but then this year the city uh, invited me to hold Chippewa Palooza downtown at the yes. Common. And uh, we've always had all volunteer bands. I asked the city, I said, well, you want to do this downtown to promote the city? Can I pay the bands? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so uh, it was pretty easy to get bands this year. <laughs> So is it different bands that are playing throughout the day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so how long? So I do know on August thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth, and Friday the thirteenth will be um, acoustic night, where just a bunch of pickers show up uh, with instruments. There's no amplification mm -hmm. uh, because it is downtown. We don't want to keep people awake, but they'll be playing into the wee hours of the night, and then the next morning we'll start with. Um, we've got a gentleman from Kalamazoo that's going to play for an hour, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five bands that are going to put in two hours each. Okay. Um, so on Saturday, August 14th, first of all, a little plug in, the Buchanan Senior Center will be at the Farmer's Market, so bring your money and get some goodies. We won't have those sticky buns there again, which I think we'll be buying more. But also, we're going to have an opportunity. So there's some people who may would like to listen to music, but don't really want to go by themselves, or they're they're not able to drive. Like we have people over at Matia Court. So we are going to give them an opportunity for us to have a little gathering, the best people and our friends. So you can meet here at 1015 if you need to ride. And we're going to do some of our transportations, and we're going to drive people downtown. We'll sit around for a couple hours, listen to music, dance, visit the farmer's market. And then about 1 o'clock or so, we'll come back here and bring everybody back. Or you can just, if you want to drive yourself, send, feel free to come over, find us, and sit with us. So we'll Why are you coming back? So early. Well, I didn't realize it was an all-day affair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. thinking like at the farmer's market time. <laughs> the city manager uh, asked her how late we could go. And I said I got bands scheduled until 10 o'clock, but normally there's some sort of delay or a glitch or something like that, um, a technical problem. Okay. And we get behind schedule, and she said, well, Make it a hard 10.30, but if you happen to go over a little bit, that'd be okay. okay. Yeah, it doesn't mean that we can't go back. It just gives yeah. us a, you know, we need to have structure and organization of to making transportation. On that transportation. day, my band will be playing at 4 o'clock. Okay. Um, well, so we'll see what happens at 4 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> so, passion, so you love to play music. Oh, I do. Um, another thing I like to do is work in my backyard. I'm a gardener. Uh, my friend Chuck over there, he and I are doing a vegetable garden right now. We're having a lot of fun with that, but I haven't seen you there in the last few days. You better come over and pull some weeds. Uh -oh. <laughs> but my mother used to say, I always come over unannounced, and whenever I do, you have a shovel in your hand. <laughs> um, I think I've moved every square foot of dirt that's on my property, and I just I have a ball of gardening. I plant trees, I plant plants. Um, who, who was the lady that lived out on Main Street? Uh, she was a gardener, but she's, she said one time that a gardener spends their first five years acquiring plants and then the rest of their life moving them. <laughs> and, and, and you find the ones that like sun or like shade. so. Yeah, we do a lot of that. Okay, well, that's awesome. That's something that you do with your family? Do your family, or is that something that you, that you kind of do on your That's own? something I do on my own. That's your, yeah. your solitude time? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And what else do you like to do? You seem pretty busy, so do you have any free time being retired? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What do you like to do I in have, your free time? I have a lot of free time. Uh, I, I spend 
afternoons and evenings following my granddaughters in softball. I got two of them that play on a 10 and under and a 12 and under team. Um, and that's a lot of fun. And then, like I mentioned, the soccer with the other grandkids. Um, paddle boarding. Uh, oh. We go down the river quite often. On a paddle board? Have yeah. Ever? Um, we, we do stand up paddle boards. Oh. In our family, there are probably family and close friends. We've probably got a dozen boards. And we go down the river quite often. Really? Yep, we were boards. out on the river on Sunday. And my son, his, his wife took their three year old daughter on her paddle board, and my son took his two kids on his paddle board. Or his two boys. I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, we went a mile or so up or toward Berrien, and we found a little beach up there that we liked to play. And we got some friends in Berrien. They came down in a boat, and we went up and met them there. And we grilled and just sat there on the edge of the river for about three hours and played. And Isn't that wonderful? I love the river. It's a lot of fun. Well, that is, that, is that nice the way. one that was on the Facebook that was shown on Facebook? Probably, yeah. yeah. I, uh, my daughter-in-law had a bunch of pictures. I saw you sitting there watching the little one and the, and the two grandsons over there. I yep. mm -hmm. saw those pictures this morning when I was looking at them on my phone. Yep. Yeah, all, all my kids are quite active. and um, I, Like I said, I have three kids in town. My daughter lives next door to me. She's got a swimming pool. My son Cole lives on the river about a mile away. Uh, and then I have another son, Lane, who lives on a lake. So we're wow. we're pretty much covered as far as water activities. <laughs> I need to be adopted. <laughs> I miss the water. What makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? Oh my goodness, a good joke. Uh, good joke. Usually a joke about me. <laughs> <laughs> my my family has a lot of stories about me that they like to tell, and they're. they're uh, <laughs> at my expense, usually. <laughs> Okay, and then for the last one, what bit of wisdom would you like to share with us? Well, I've been thinking about that. Um, I didn't want to prepare too much for these questions, but a bit of wisdom to share is don't let other people force you into making decisions. Uh, don't be bullied. I, my kids, uh, you always try to teach your kids about peer pressure. and One day... I mean, I, I never felt like we were doing a good job of teaching them about it, but one day they had a friend over, and they had been across the street, and they found a bunch of snakes. And Matt said to my oldest son, let's go over and play with the snakes some more. No, I don't want to. He said, oh, you're afraid. And I said, wow, <laughs> this is peer pressure. <laughs> you, you never have a good example when you want to tell your kids about it, but I just stopped the conversation. I said, this is what I've been talking to you about. This is peer pressure. Don't let anybody do things, or don't let anybody make you do things that you feel uncomfortable about. That's a good one. Good, good, good. Anybody have any questions for Richard? Well, you did a fabulous one, one job. quick question. Okay, yes. sure. What's in the trees that are going to be planted out here, the memorial trees, which one's your favorite? Well, there's the red bud. Uh, we are the red bud city. Right. Um, so red bud trees I really like for their color in the, in the fall. Or, I'm sorry, in the spring. Um, my favorite, oh my. We have planted a few. Uh, there's one in... Ravish Park. It's a red horse chestnut. It has spike flower spikes about yay big, and the whole tree was just covered with them this spring. So I, yeah, I guess that's probably my favorite. Anyone else? Any other questions from the peanut gallery? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. I am so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking your time and being here today. And Richard, thank you so much. For being here and sharing, and so really had such an advocate for the city and for the different things here that's offered. So that's really nice, you know, at the center as well as city and what you do. Well, one nice and thing I noticed is 
there's no clock on the wall that I could see. So I wasn't worried about the time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much time has transpired, but I. I, I, I have. Oh. It's right back here. It's behind us. You have to look at it. <laughs> well, thank you. You're I welcome. do appreciate it so thank much. You, and so honored to be here with everybody. Blessings. Until next time.